Now let's move on to session two. Two representatives will make presentations under the theme of social implementation. The first presentation is by Mr. Wada Akira, Senior General Manager of Africa Planning Department, Africa Division, Toyota Tsusho Corporation. He is responsible for business management and administration for the African business of the company. He is an experienced manager in management for overseas entities, new business development, and cross-border merger and acquisition. The title of this presentation is Initiative Through a Fertilizer Business for Improving Agricultural Productivity in Kenya. Mr. Wada, please begin. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tanaka, the uh, distinguished guest, all the participants, and ladies and gentlemen. The, I'm Akira Wada. As I introduced, uh, I'm a senior, man senior general manager of the Toyota Tsushu Corporation. Uh, it's quite my honor to speak such a wonderful occasion. Okay, uh, now the, uh, let me begin the, my presentation. And uh, as the outset, uh, uh, please let me explain the, who is the Toyota Su Show and uh, which, what is our activity in Africa. The Toyota Su Show is a, a trading and investment farm of Japanese Toyota Group. Uh, we have ex extensive uh, focused the operation in Africa, as you can see. So we have the operation in 50 countries, all the countries. And also the, our workforce in Africa is 22,000 people, uh, which is one third of the global Toyota Tsushu Corporation workforce. And our uh, revenue, the sales exceeded uh, 1.1 trillion Japanese yen, uh, which is equivalent of the 8.5 billion US dollar last year. And our main business in 4.4 uh, business is the mobility, healthcare, and consumer and uh, infrastructure. Our, our business uh, is based on uh, uh, this, our uh, vision, a motto uh, with Africa and for Africa. Uh, this is the always basis for our business. And also I uh, touch upon uh, uh, our strategy and go on. The, we just introduced, uh, announced during a ticket to eight. The, this is uh, our four main theme, the industrial transformation, green economy, and global health. And the most important point is the capacity building of the human resources in Africa. Now, uh, I like moving to the uh, today's main topics, uh, fertilizer business in Africa and fertilizer business in Kenya for Toyota Tsusho. Uh, yes, uh, uh, in 2015, uh, we have established the company called uh, Toyota Tsusho Fertilizer Africa in 2015. And I will start producing the uh, balanced nutrition branded fertilizer. Uh, the balance, uh, name of the uh, fertilizer brand is called Baraka. The uh, production is about 150,000 metric ton a year. And uh, earlier this year, the French fertilizer company called the Group Laurier. Uh, joined our forces, and then we form currently forming a joint venture called Kimak Agro Kenya, and continue the producing a uh, uh, baraka fertilizer. The reason why uh, we established a fertilizer company in uh, in 2015 is uh, uh, we recognize the problem in Kenya, especially in a Kenyan soil. The historically, uh, Kenya is using the fertilizer, maybe 500,000 ton. Uh, all the fertilizer was imported. And then uh, using in for the agriculture purpose for the in, in Kenya. Then the, this becoming commonly known in Kenyan agriculture sector, the Kenyan soil becoming very acidic. The issue the thirteen percent of the Kenyan agriculture land is affected by soil acidity. As you can see, that this 
west part of the Kenya is uh, mostly affected. But the problem here is uh, uh, this area, the so-called North Lift Valley, uh, West Kenya, is basically the uh, heart of the cropland of Kenya, so-called crop basket. So the this area's soil problem is actually the entire problem of the ag agricultural productivity in Kenya. So that's the reason why uh, we discussed with the Kenyan government, and then we decided making fertilizer company and producing uh, the crop specific and the soil specific branded fertilizer. Yes, uh, I believe the most of the audience knows the what is advanced nutrition fertilizer uh, compared to the straight fertilizer. The, in Kenya, uh, currently the DAP or TSP or SSP is distributed. However, the, uh, that's only give the uh, single limited nutrition uh, to the soil or to the plant. But on the contrary, as you know, the, the balanced nutrition fertilizer or branded fertilizer will give the many required nutrients. So that's the uh, plant. Uh, can grow healthy. Yes, uh, this is a picture. The left side is a DAP, the most common fertilizer in the world. And the uh, right side of the picture is showing the, our fertilizer, blended fertilizer. So the, the reason why the Kenyan soil is becoming acidic is a single usage or common usage, continuous usage of the single fertilizer DAP. So the nutrients becoming uh, more and more, uh, actually the, uh, the plant is taking uh, the important uh, essential nutrients from the soil and then inputting uh, uh, just the single fertilizer is excavate the soil condition of the, the Kenya. So the, uh, to address those soil conditions, uh, we believe uh, actually the, uh, providing our fertilizer the, uh, that this the malnutrition of the soil uh, will be alleviated so that the farmer can enjoy the better productivity. That was our intention. First, uh, uh, we first first the finding out the farmer who has a crop production problem or producti productivity problem. The first we identify farmer the what is your crop and what is the soil condition, so that we started the soil sampling and an analysis, and then uh, we make a best formulation for the farmer or the farm by the product design. And of course, uh, we continue to use the main nutrients of the fertilizer, uh, which is NPK, uh, but uh, we also add the some other nutrition or micronutrition, like uh, as you can see in the bottom, uh, we also add some boron, zinc, copper, uh, so to depend on uh, their soil condition, also depend on the, uh, their crop production. And then uh, we're making blending, and also sometimes we're coating and then making a uh, fertilizer. So the, our fertilizer plant is a blending fertilizer plant. So the beauty of the blending fertilizer is uh, you can make, or you can blend, or you can formulate the nutrient as you want at the uh, uh, limited condition or limited volume. The, if you make a uh, uh, chemical blending or um, chemical fertilizer or the uh, granulation fertilizer, uh, that's required uh, uh, some scale of the economics, some scale of the volume, such as like a uh, uh, million ton or half a million ton. But the, for the farmers in Kenya, uh, each farmer require only uh, maybe a 200 kilo or 300 kilo of the uh, fertilizer for their usage. So the for us, 
that uh, we can make it uh, based on the farmer's need. That's the beauty or that's a merit or advantage of the blending fertilizer. Then uh, based on our usage, usage of the Varaka fertilizer, the many farmers uh, enjoy the uh, boosting uh, productivity as you can see the maize the maize is the main crop for the I main crop for the agriculture uh, uh, the farmer in Kenya the using or switching from DAP to baraka the, they enjoy the 60 percent the productivity increase and potato is astonishing that double the productivity and the sugar cane is uh, switching from urea to balaka. Uh, they also had a, a very good the increase of the productivity. So this shows the uh, just the switching from the uh, common fertilizer to our baraka or branding nutrition fertilizer and showing a such significant increase. So the, uh, please imagine if the uh, farmer not utilizing, not using uh, fertilizer, then the productivity will definitely grow and increase. So now uh, that we have the uh, various fertilizer, the formulation now, the for the maize, potato, and bean, and also the uh, rice. Rice is also important, the crop. Uh, for Africa and for Kenya. The matter of fact, uh, we, for, we dis, uh, established this rice formulation uh, with cooperation with the JICA. And also the tea. Uh, tea is a uh, uh, main cash crop for the uh, Kenyan farmer and uh, one of the uh, export items for the country Kenya. And also coffee, sugar cane. And depend on the uh, crop, the, we change the specification to change the formulation of the, the fertilizer. The, for example, the, the rice require the more the, uh, uh, potassium or maybe sulfur. And where the uh, top dressing for the uh, tea require the more nitrogen. So the depend on the soil, depend on the crop. Uh, as I can I explain, we formulated the fertilizer and also that depending on the soil condition, uh, uh, we can the produce, uh, the establish the, uh, the most desired required uh, formulation for the farm. And of course, the, uh, just making a good fertilizer alone, uh, doesn't make the, this project work. The, uh, we organize the uh, many field trial the, through the several season uh, so that the farmer uh, will be convinced that switching fertilizer to the uh, branded fertilizer is really working for their farm. Also, the, uh, we conducted many, many farming seminar by ourselves or maybe the, but with the local government and uh, uh, with uh, uh, other institute. So that's the, uh, the we can inform them. Uh, we will let the farmers know uh, what is the best fertilizer. And not only that, the, uh, we also uh, educate uh, give the information is uh, what is a light fertilizer and uh, also the what is a light agricultural practice. And that's more important. So that uh, just to apply the fertilizer without the knowledge is basically the doesn't uh, extract the best result of the fertilizer. So the application is imp important. Practical application or right application is important. So the light fertilizer and the light application for the crop and soil. That's always uh, how we uh, insist to the farmer 
uh, our field activity, uh, what, uh, such as uh, uh, the conducting field trial and also the uh, pharma seminar. The one good thing uh, in uh, uh, fertilizer industry or agricultural industry sector in Af uh, in Kenya is uh, they have extended extensive network of the uh, agriculture, the kiosk or a retail outlet. So that uh, uh, in Kenya, the about a half a million ton of fertilizer is being distributed through the uh, private distribution channel. So the manufacturer or importer uh, manufacturer like us uh, is uh, distributing or selling the fertilizer or supplying the fertilizer to the distributor or wholesaler. Then wholesaler is distributing fertilizer to the, the regional wholesaler. Then regional wholesaler is the supplying or the distributing to the small shop. So for us, the, we need to get attention uh, we need to, uh, we need to make the final usage quite a uh, farmer to understand farmer to know where they can buy our fertilizer so the uh, yes and when we organize the uh, farming seminar at the time the farmer is always asked okay the, your fertilizer is good but how can I get your fertilizer so the uh, distribution channel distribution network uh, quite important uh, to farmer to use the fertilizer and uh, using light fertilizer and improving uh, agriculture activity. So the, uh, we focused on uh, on the retail outlet, like a uh, branding, also the uh, distribution, also that uh, we stock the light portion of the fertilizer at the time of the uh, application season. Also, another important point is the financing. The ES fertilizer is investment. The, especially the uh, current soaring price of the uh, natural resources, uh, the cost. So that uh, we have to provide the financing program uh, which available to the all the farmers. So the uh, for us, uh, is of course uh, producing a light fertilizer, but uh, also that uh, that fertilizer make available to the each farmer, every corner in the farmer. So the whenever or wherever, uh, once the fertilizer is required, uh, we shall make them available for the farmer. And uh, oh, luckily, the, in Kenya, uh, we were not alone. We are not alone. Uh, we made uh, many collaboration with institution, uh, Japanese government like JICA or the uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and Fishery. Also, the in Kenya, the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fishery. And also the uh, academic institution uh, like Moi University, they have a very good agricultural school. Also the international institution like uh, IFTC or German ZIZ, and also the private uh, institution, the private soil uh, company, uh, soil survey company, uh, CropNuts, also the equity is a financing company. So that's all the effort, all the, those people's effort, those entities' effort to make the uh, improvement, the fertilizer or uh, agricultural product is possible for the Kenyan farmer. I think that's uh, my that's the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Wada. The next presentation is by Dr. Stella Kabidi, Lead Regenerative Agriculture, Sasakawa Africa Association, SAA, Ethiopia. She specializes in production ecology and resource conservation. 
She worked in research and technology extension at the National Agricultural Research Institute in Uganda before joining SAA this year. The title of this presentation is Dissemination of Technologies to Improve Soil Health in Africa, SAA Experience. Dr. Stella Kabiri, please begin. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad that I have, I have been given the chance to, to present at this uh, important event of TCAD 8. And my talk is about dissemination of technologies to improve soil health in Africa, the Sasakawa Africa Association uh, experience. Next slide, please. Uh, Sasakawa Africa Association, SAA, was established as an international NGO in 1986 to support Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa countries, which, which had suffered from the ravages of famine. It has a wide footprint in Africa. Um, mainly the countries that are shown in green are where SAA is currently intervening, while the ones in orange, it, it, it used to operate uh, some time back. Uh, SAA has country offices in Ethiopia, Nigeria, and Mali, and we deal with several priority crops of those countries. For instance, in Ethiopia, it is teff, maize, wheat, sorghum, and barley. In Uganda, it is uh, soybean, beans, maize, rice, cassava, and sorghum. Uh, in Nigeria, it is rice, wheat, maize, and soybean, while in Mali, it is rice, maize, sorghum, millet, fonio cowpea, and, ground, and groundnuts. Next slide. Uh, one of the issues about the, the state of soil health in Africa, like it has been described by my former presenters who have presented before me, is that 65% uh, of agricultural land in Africa is degraded due to poor management practices. Uh, a recent study found that we have an annual nutrient depletion of about 36 kilograms per hectare per year, which is a uh, way below the average in sub-Saharan Africa, which is about 17 to 20 kilograms per hectare. So we are losing more nutrients than we are adding to the soil. And, and if I break down the specific nutrients, specifically nitrogen is lost at 22 kilograms per hectare per year, while phosphorus is at 2.5 kilograms per hectare per year, while potassium is at 15 kilograms per hectare per year. And this soil declining soil fertility is because of loss of nutrients, loss of organic matter, and the declining biological, chemical, and physical properties. Next slide. Uh, my previous presenters, pre uh, specifically Professor Funakawa, has greatly showed the kind of soil diversity that we have in Africa. And SAA takes into account this diversity of soils when we are promoting our technologies of improving soil health. For instance, in the Mali area, we find that the soils are sandy textured, they lack humus, and some parts are impenetrable. When it comes to the Nigeria area, the soils are strongly weathered, they are high in iron, meaning that there's a lot of iron toxicity, low in humus, and they are clay and wet lowland areas where they grow rice specifically. The Ethiopia has some areas that are very acidic, weathered soils, they lack humus, and also a lot of salinity are around the, the Red Sea area. Then Uganda soils are inherently fertile, but they are very withered, and there is also extensive leaching. While in Southern Africa, the soils have a good drainage, they have a high humus, but this humus layer is over a leached layer, meaning that there's a lot of leaching of nutrients and strongly weathered. Generally, the entire picture of African soils is that they are really weathered, and they don't handle the nutrients very well, and they have lost a lot of organic carbon, as it has been emphasized by my former presenters. Next slide, please. So SAA took the approach of regenerative agriculture as the driver for sustainable intensification. And it uses two approaches, which is the dissemination of conservation agriculture technologies and integrated soil fertility management technologies. And it uses soil as the base, because soil is where we are going to restore the biodiversity, the soil health, including the capture of carbon. It also materializes on the African style of regenerative agriculture because more, many African uh, cropping systems use regenerative agriculture because of the low input uh, use. 
Next slide. So in the approach of regenerative agriculture, we define sustainable intensification as an agricultural process or system where valued outcomes, which are sometimes are yield, are maintained or increased while maintaining the environmental outcomes or enhancing them. And we measure yield, the input requirements to achieve that yield, the impact on soil quality, because the soil is the one that will support crop yields and input use efficiencies and also impact on the natural resources and ecosystems that are affected by the production system. Next. So in the area of the principles of conservation agriculture, uh, the idea is that intense tillage is unnecessary and it leads to land degradation. So conservation agriculture has three pillars, which are no or minimum tillage, maintaining a permanent soil cover and crop rotation. I have here two pictures, one showing a cabbage garden in Uganda, which is mulched, covering that soil, and also a garden in, in, uh, in, uh, with, with one of our farmers in Ethiopia, who is practicing crop rotation. Next. So the no on, on minimum tillage requires that we just do direct planting without tilling, but it also needs equipment for direct seeding. The advantage of minimum tillage is that it protects soil organic matter from accelerated decomposition. It improves the soil structure and, wall, uh, and water infiltration. And farmers experience realize that with minimum tillage, that it improves water percolation. And also they realize that when they over till the land, there is a lot of soil erosion. So this is a, one of the uh, technologies that reduces soil erosion on their fields. Next. Cover cropping is one of the technologies we also promote to, to increase organic matter and plant nutrients, as well as soil health. And it is a technology that needs a minimum of two to three tons of biomass per hectare. The, the area has to be really covered by biomass. And also the farmer has to be able to return or retain at least 30% of the crop residues after harvest. This, uh, this is the area where we see the intimate relationship between nitrogen fertilizers and, uh, and carbon. When you add nitrogen fertilizers, you increase biomass. And this biomass is the one that in turn becomes soil organic carbon. So the idea is that uh, a lot of this uh, biomass has to be returned to the, to, the, to the garden and not taken away at harvest. So with farmers experience, they find that the use of leguminous crops in practice result in, in uh, addition of soil organic matter. And then it also, because of, it, of the fat, fertility, when they have leguminous crops, it, they require less inorganic fertilizers, but it also increases yields and it is simple and cost effective. Next. For crop rotation, it's already a traditional practice in Africa. It is one of the ways that African cropping systems have managed to be sustained. And uh, the advantage about it is that it diversifies incomes. It inc the nitrogen fixing legumes increase soil fertility and also control pests and diseases because you have changed the cycle. And farmers benefit from it because it is a, a diversified, they get more income from the two crops, but also it increases uh, soil fertility. Another aspect we promote for soil health is mulching or crop residue management. Mulching is one of those uh, activities that they sound easy to make, but when you start looking for the mulch, it's a big problem because they are competing uses on the farmland for these crop residues. Farmers use them for animal feed, they use them for infrastructure, plastering, cooking, and also they fetch a lot of, sometimes they fetch a lot of money than the real crop when they sell these residues. But uh, mulching has an advantage of, of uh, improving the soil organic matter, including more nutrients and, and uh, improving soil health as well as suppressing weeds and increasing water infiltration. Now farmers experience with mulching is that some say that it increases pests and diseases, specifically termites, which is normal because termites are decomposers and mulch is usually a crop residue. So we sub it also suppresses weeds. And in, in Ethiopia, they found that when they demonstrated the high crop cut, it contributed to increasing soil fertility. In Mali, like our present, pre, uh, previous presenters have presented, Mali has a lot of uh, sandy soils and sandy soils are very difficult to hold organic carbon. So farmers, uh, we promote the use of, of livestock manure, 
but leaves livestock manure can only sustain that cropping system for a season because this organic matter quickly mineralizes but and it's also a very labor intensive aspect for the farmers to keep on bringing uh, to, to get this organic manure from from the cattle but the advantage is that it increases uh, the organic uh, the, the biological activity and also the organic matter content and it is one of the ways that the cropping systems in uh, in mali are maintained next uh, in terms of uh, integrated soil fertility management like i explained to you earlier there are some soils in ethiopia are are really acidic so we also promote liming of these acidic soils and then we 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 combine inorganic fertilizers alongside manure and uh, here below we have pictures of uh, of our SAA team working with farmers in the field to, to, to make composts in Ethiopia, compost, compost uh, organic matter in Mali, and also fertilizer applicators, which were given to farmers recently in Nigeria. And these make sure that we have a precision kind of fertilizer application because fertilizers are now a really scarce resource and uh, it needs to be used really, really carefully. Next. Um, we have the impacts of our of our interventions in african countries vary a recent study by kahara found out that uh, that uh, conservation agriculture and integrated soil fertility management practices yield different results because the soils really are different uh, you find that leaching can be as low as 0 0.3 nitrogen leaching but it can go as high as two, 242 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, sometimes exceeding applied amounts. But conservation agriculture has been found to reduce soil erosion from up to 28% to up to 500%, and also runoff from 28% to 50%. Here I have some pictures showing uh, some of our farmers' fields in the different countries. Uh, we have uh, the upper picture here shows a farmers' field in Ethiopia. When you look at this field, the soil is really loose and it is. Uh, it can be easily carried away by soil because of, of pulverization over the generations. So we promote permanent vegetation cover or, perma, or, or perma, what we call perma gardens, such that they, there's a permanent soil cover to prevent that soil erosion. Uh, in Mali, we, prevent, we, we promote uh, also organic matter to manage some of these uh, uh, sandy soils, which are very difficult to capture carbon. Here in the middle is a picture of, of a field in, the, in Uganda. You can look at the soil, it looks as though it is, uh, it is fertile. But then when you look at the crop, you realize that this soil is actually unresponsive. So in regenerative agriculture, we are trying to revive some of these unresponsive soils using the practices we have just explained. And next is a picture from Nigeria that, that uh, we use uh, regenerative agriculture to make sure that this this cropping system continues growing rice. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. I look forward to any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Stella Kabidi.